Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Yo Yo Man with Barnsley. In today's episode we have the final two games of the championship season. There has been seven games since the last time we met and we are unbeaten in all of them. Now that sounds impressive. It's really not. <laughs> so following on from the demolition of Cardiff we went away from home against QPR one of our main rivals for the playoff spot. We only end up drawing 3-3. We were actually pretty dominant in this game, but we almost got beat. They ended up going 3-2 ahead in the 83rd minute. Mavro Panas did equalise in the 90th and managed to rescue a point for us. But we were 1-0 up, then 2-1 up, then 3-2 down. So um, two drop points maybe, but a one-point gain depending on your perspective. But um, it wasn't enough for us. Next up was a home tie against struggling Millwall. And as you can see by the match stats, we completely dominated. But the chances created is the key area. And we didn't really create any, unfortunately. Uh, Tom Bradshaw put Millwall ahead. We equalised through Cameron McGeehan. Jason Malumbi then got a 90th minute winner for Millwall. Until Corley Woodrow in the 93rd minute got the goal to give us the point and the equaliser. But again, a disappointing result. Disappointing performance. Are you starting to see a theme? There's definitely a theme developing. 2-2 at home against Blackburn. Alex Mort had put us in front, but Adam Armstrong and Jack Vale in two minutes ended up putting uh, Blackburn in the lead. And then Rion Brewster in the 93rd minute <laughs> managed to get the goal to give us the equaliser. Three draws in a row. Three very late goals are the only reason why we got them. Let's move on to the next game. Well, how about that? Is that another draw? Stoke City nil, Barnsley nil. Uh, that's a little bit of a shock. We don't really draw many games. Let's look at the next one. Ah, oh, away from home against Luton. Uh, Mavro Panas injured in the 22nd. Van der Heerde sent off in the 41st and a nil-nil draw. It almost seems like we like drawing games. Let's look at the next one. <laughs> oh, 1-1 one against Wigan. Six draws in a row. I don't think I've ever had a run of fixtures in any save on Football Manager where I've drew six times in a row. But we'll manage to do it here. Apo Halme had put us in front 59 minutes in but Devante Aquil equalised with only 12 minutes remaining of regular time. And it was our sixth draw in a row. And at this point, I was just like, what's, what's even the point of playing these games? But then, just as I'd already threw in the towel, and the towels threw in, by the way, for the playoffs pretty much. But we'll see the league table after this game. Leeds were in sixth position. We were in like ninth. Um, and we won 2-0 away from home. Colly Woodrow with the penalty and Jordan Ive with the other. Just to give us even the slimmest bit of hope going into the final two games. But I've already resigned myself to not making the playoffs this season. As you can see, we currently sit in 8th position on 69 points. 4 points behind Leeds and 6 with only 2 games remaining. Even if Leeds would lose both games, we would need QPR to mess up as well. It's such a big ask. It's not really going to happen. It's very unlikely. Particularly as we have <coughs> Nottingham Forest at home, which isn't a bad tie for us. 19th place in the league. But then we have Brentford away from home, who currently sit in 2nd. So... This might just be a bit of a formality two games just to finish this season off. If we are to make the playoffs, it's an absolute miracle. Um, just look at our form, man. Ever since that January transfer period, we've won three games. Three games in the league. Uh, we've lost plenty. We've drew even more. <laughs> that, that, this run here, though, if we'd, only, if we'd just won these two, Stoke and Luton will be in with a real shout. But we didn't. Let's move on to today's game. First one against Nor uh, Nottingham Forest at home. Let's get into it. So we're sticking with the defensive midfielder in our formation, which is McGee in today. Uh, Radlinger in goal, Cavaria, Diaby, Halmir and Albanoz in the defence. Mavro Panas is currently injured, that's why he's not playing. Uh, Moat in the centre with Bruno Costa, Jordan Ibe, Wilkes in behind, Corley, Woodrow. Nottingham Forest come on us with a pretty defensive 4-5-1 formation. It's, we have struggled to break this sort of team down, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do it again today. But let's see how it goes. First highlight of the game, McGee in. Plays out the right hand side for Wilkes. Gets tackled by Robinson though. And thankfully DRB comes and claims it before he knocked him for a strike it does. And the ball's played to Jordan Ibe in the box. Go for goal. He goes for Wilkes at the back post. And Malik Wilkes gets his 18th goal of the season. He is our top scorer by the way. For the league this season. And that is surely going to seal it for him in terms of our players anyway. A decent little bit of business by McGeehan here. Switching the play to Jordan Ibe in the box. And I thought Ibe was going to go for goal to be honest with you. But it's a decent little cross. Uh, Wilkes on his is that his stronger foot? Is he left footed? I think he is. On his strong foot. Gets the volley in. But yeah, thinking about this season really is a little bit saddening. We had such a good opportunity to make it in the playoffs this season. The second half of the season has been dreadful. If you think about it, we're still only eight points away from the automatic pos uh, 
promotion spots. If we hadn't collapsed, we would have easily been able to make it into there. Eight points gained out of those games that we've played should have been relatively easy. But uh, we'll get another season in the championship. That is absolutely fine by me. As I've said previously, we can start to build the foundations, build the squad a little bit more to be more Premier League ready for when the promotion bid actually comes. But we'll stick with this highlight now. Cavaria plays the ball in. Jordan Ibes there, back post. 15th goal of the season. Are we just playing with freedom now? Now that we know it's pretty much over, I think we are. Jordan Ibe, he's been good for us. He's been good in spells. That's the key thing with him. Same with Wilkes, same with Woodrow, same with Ryan Brewster, really. All of our attack players, they've had decent spells throughout the course of the season. They just haven't really been able to gel throughout the all the season, basically. So looking how the fixtures are playing out, looks like QPR are getting beat at the minute. But Leeds are winning, which isn't ideal for us. We need Leeds and Brist or, and or Bristol City to get beat to be in with any chance going into the final day of the season. But that's half-time. Uh, Barnsley 2, Nottingham Forest 0. It's been a pretty easy game so far. I'm actually going to get the latest scores up. I've still, I still hold this tiny bit of hope. Derby, come on, do us a favour. Where's Bristol City? Are they, are they at home? Have I already skipped past them? No, they're not. They're drawn with Swansea. They are now winning. <laughs> QPR are now winning as well. So, yeah, it looks... It looks pretty much over for us. We'll keep an eye on the league table just in case. But with four points, the gap now between us and the playoffs and only 10 minutes remaining, it's not going to change. Jordan Williams can come on for Cavaria. Jordan Ibe can come on for Luke Thomas. And Malik Wilkes can come off for Rian Brewster on that right-hand side. Made all of our three subs with seven minutes to go. Nottingham Forest come forward with Lewis Graben. He gets past his man, gets past the other and goes for goal. It's well over the bar. And there we have it. I didn't really see the league table right at the very end, but if results stayed the same as they were, we have missed out on the playoffs this season, and this final game means pretty much nothing. We'll quickly just confirm that, yes, Redden are in sixth position, four points ahead of us with one game remaining. We're out of it. Disappointing. Really, really disappointing. But here, looking back to where we started from, it's a fantastic first season at Barnsley. And despite the disappointing second half of the season, we can be proud of what we've managed to achieve with such an average squad. Um, not even average, below average. We were expected to finish bottom, according to the media. But we've managed to really, really, really do well. And I'm, I have to keep reminding myself not to be too disappointed. As the Brentford game now doesn't really matter, I will just play that off screen and we'll do our end of season roundup and discuss our plans for next season in the Championship. So of course, now that the pressure's off, the boys turn up and beat Brentford and prevent them getting prom promoted automatically. I am very sorry, Brentford. Our boys didn't need to do that, but they did. Um, I didn't even see who scored. Uh, Arjen van der Rent, uh, Herder, Bruno Costa and Jordan Ibu came on for Wilkes in the second half. Got the goals for us to give us the 3-1 win. We will take a final look at the championship table after that. So we sit in 8th position, only 3 points outside of the playoffs, brutally missing it. A plus 32 goal difference is absolutely massive. It's the highest in the entire league and we still <laughs> didn't come in the top 6. Absolutely gutting here. But um, as you can see, Brentford missed out on automatic promotion due to that defeat. And Bristol City nip in and get 2nd place, which is uh, good for them, I guess. So I'll play on a little bit, get to our end of season stuff so we can see some of the awards, who actually get, got promoted from the playoff system. And then we'll talk about the squad a little bit, what I plan for next season and who's going to steer and who is, could potentially end up leaving the club. Here we go then, we've got our end of season messages and Bruno Costa has won the fans player of the season. Alex Moat and Corley Woodrow coming in second and third. Ryan Brewster got goal of the season, we'll take a look at that. Side in the season was of course Bru Bruno Costa as well. He was very good for £475,000. Is he the sort of player that I see myself sticking with longer term? I don't really know about that. We'll take a look at Ryan Brewster's goal then. It was a goal against Preston North End. Did we get beaten this game? Why do I feel like we got beaten this game? Never mind. Well, I'll take a look at this. He picks it up on the halfway line. We'll just boost his speed a little bit. Come on, Brewster. We've got all day. And that was a very, very tidy finish as well. I'm surprised that one uh, goal of the season, to be honest with you. Uh, with season in review, then few will have tipped Barnsley to have been capable of avoiding relegation heading into the season, but the Reds confounded every expectation by achieving a top half finish. We work very, very competitive in this league, and given a couple of results going up one way or the other, we could have been in the playoff system. Has the playoffs actually finished yet? 
Uh, it's Brentford and West Brom, by the way, who are in the playoff final. Board set initial budget. Oh, it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> so we've got 1.4 million and 10k per week available in the wages. Should oh man, it's that's a little bit gotten, but we're going to stick with it anyway. We can't leave the club, by the way. I know this is a journeyman. But the only way we leave the club is if we are sacked or if we have completed one season in the Premier League. Um, I'll take a, I'll take a look at these. Actually, we'll take a look at them now. We're going to go ne negotiate this. Do not sign players over the age of 28. That's fine by me. Sign players under 23. That's fine. Um, all of these are pretty fine by me. I don't want to make the most of set pieces though. So we're going to try and get rid of that if at all possible. Um, bah, 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 bah. Sign players sell profit. I'm absolutely fine with pretty much everything. And at the end of the five seasons, I expect us to win promotion to the Premier League, which is not too bad by me. I hope to do it a lot sooner than that. So we'll suggest that. And I'm going to keep suggesting it until they remove this set piece thing. No. Okay. They really want us to, <laughs> to make the most of set pieces. Never mind. Um, so looking forward to next season. And what are we planning? What is the sketch? Every single player in our squad is up for sale. <laughs> Based on the £1.4 million pounds we've got to spend, that's not going to be good enough for me to be able to assemble a squad to be able to challenge at the top of the championship. Alex Moat, Corley Woodrow, Malik Wilkes, Bambo Diaby, Cameron McGeehan, Bruno Costa, Dimitri Cavaria, Albanoz, Ian Van... Well, not Ian Van der Heerde. He's staying no matter what. Apo Halmere, Ben Williams, Jordan Williams... They are all available and on the market should an offer come in. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to go around offering them, offering their services to other clubs. That's not what I'm about. But should an offer come in, I will negotiate and hopefully even say like Moat, he's not a ten and a half million pound player. If I can get fifteen million pounds for him, champion. Same with Corley Woodrow. If I can get ten million pounds for him, champion. I can for ten million pounds in the championship, you can buy like three players who are going to be top top quality. Malik Wilkes. Is what I'm definitely interested in selling. I plan on playing Ian van der Heerde on that right hand side. And starting him every game next season as much as possible. And whilst Malik Wilkes has improved dramatically. And he has been a good goal scorer for us. He blows so hot and cold it's not even funny. He will go 5 games where he averages a 6. Then he'll have 3 games where he averages an 8. And then he'll go back to averaging a 6.2. As you can see by his average rating. No player who scores 16 goals and gets 8 assists should be averaging a 6.99. That should be well above 7. But he just, for one reason or another, he hasn't managed to do it. Bambo Diaby has been absolutely fantastic for us at the back and is someone I wouldn't mind keeping a hold of. Both being valued at 7.75 million and attracting interest from Premier League clubs. Same with Wilkes, he's been attracted by Burnley. They're definitely two of the main ones who I look at and think I would make even if it's about 20 million between the two and reinvest that in the rest of the squad i think is the sort of thing we need to be shrewd about and it's something we need to be open to and unfortunately one way or the other we're going to have to make changes during the summer because we haven't got the transfer budget to be able to do it just naturally now in terms of the first team squad next season radlinger is going to leave the club i'm not interested in offering him a new contract of over 10 grand per week which he is wanting so a new goalkeeper will be required in the summer brad collins is a decent enough backup so he can stay he's got a good few years left on his deal still to go so we will slot him in as substitute number one mads anderson he's going to stay because of his contracts not running out but again if an offer comes in for him of a million pounds he's, he's out the door but other than that he's going to be our first substitute on the bench abo halmere he's decent enough and um, 21 years old still got good potential to grow as well he might be one who we end up sticking out with at the back. Even though he got dropped for Costas, Costantinos Mavropanas, who will return to Arsenal. Um, you know, being only 21 years old and still having that little bit of extra room to grow, he could end up finding himself as a first choice, as would Bambo Diaby, should he not end up being sold. Toby Sibic, you haven't seen much of him. He is very much just a backup squad player who I'm not going to put in the squad right now. He may end up being sold. Um, Miko Albanoz, our new sign in January, he did okay when he came in and he should be good enough in the championship with a £5 million and 29 years old. If an offer was to come in, I would be stupid to turn it down. But at least for now, I think I'm happy with him as being our left back. Um, in terms of right backs then, Dimitri Kavaria, he is more than capable of being a very, very good championship player. According to our uh, 
Uh, assistant manager is a good player for most champ Sky Bet Championship sides. But he is injury prone, which leaves me with a little bit of concern. But again, I think I'm happy. Am I happy? I think I'm okay if he's our starting right back for next season. Uh, Jordan Williams is more than capable of being a backup right back as well. He is very, very good and very, uh, very capable of being a backup. Or still only 20 years old with a tiny bit of potential still to grow. English as well, which is always nice. So he he can stay as our backup. Ben Williams can stay as our backup uh, left back as well. He was the one who started. I was starting left back who got injured, and maybe it was him being out that ended up derailing our entire season. In terms of defensive midfield, we need a new one, unfortunately. Um, Cameron McGeehan just isn't what I'm looking for in that defensive midfield role. I'm looking for someone with a bit more flair, vision, uh, to be able to control the game from deep, and he's just not the man for me. Uh, but Alex Moat will. If he stays, be the starting central midfielder, and McGee will be his backup. So uh, he does have a future at the club, should it be required. Kenny Duggle, he will leave the club uh, as his contract was running out. Jacob Brown is our only uh, player who's been trained at the club. And if you don't know the Sky Bear Championship rules, you need to have one in your match day squad. So that's why he was always on the bench. So he's probably going to stay, but I'm not going to give him a spot in the squad just now. Callum Styles, you never saw him. A high potential uh, youngster will try and get him some long game time out next season. Jordan Iber, of course, is going to leave the club. Danny Pinellos, he needs to go. He needs to leave. His contract's running out. That's absolutely fine. Bruno Costa, he's going to get initially going to get the starting spot in the attacker midfielder centre. But I've already got my eye on someone who would be a lot better. So at 6.75 million, that's why I'm very interested in see if there's any offers that come in for him. Ian van der Heerde, just look at him. Look at him. He has been improving absolutely massively. And once this becomes a natural position for him, I think he will be an absolute torment in the championship on that right-hand side. So that is where he is going to start pretty much every game. In terms of Malik Wilkes, if he doesn't leave the club, he can be his backup. No problem at all. Luke Thomas will try and get some long game time out. Still only 21 years old. Bicho, he's still classed as our attack midfielder backup, but he has been complaining a lot. In terms of wanting first team football. So he's probably going to end up leaving. And Corley Woodrow will start. As our starting striker. Um, should he not leave the club. Valued at 9.5 million again. I am more than willing to move him on. So this is sort of the basic shell. Of what we need. We need a new left winger. We need a new defensive midfielder. And we need a new goalkeeper. Should we be able to sign them for one and a bit million? Probably not. We're going to have to rely heavily on the loan market. Unless... Somebody comes in for Wilkes, somebody comes in for Diaby, Corley Woodrow, Moat, uh, Bruno Costa. Again, everybody's for sale. Nobody's nobody's not replaceable in this squad. So looking at our finances screen, you can see why the board have been uh, a bit stingy in terms of the transfer budget. We haven't got the revenue, um, even in the championship with a very, very low wage, to actually make a profit over the course of a season. So as you can see, we've lost £2.2 .2 million this season. Uh, next season we're going to have to try, try and focus a little bit more on the cup competitions to, just to try and boost this a little bit more and player sales are going to play a massive part uh, as to how well we do next season I think if the squad was to see as it is we wouldn't compete for automatic we might be able to compete for playoffs next season but ideally I would like to get Barnsley in the Premier League after next season that is the target that is the goal it's a bit lofty but it's what I'm aiming for and I hope you join us for the next bit of the journey. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.